My name is Emily Deering. I'm actually an Arizona native, basically. Uh, raised here from a very young age and first fell in love with singing and vocal performance in middle school and, and uh, ever since then uh, that's basically been what I've wanted to do for the rest of my life. It started with a love of musical theater because musical theater really tells a story and yes your voice has to be beautiful but first and foremost you have to be honest even though you're acting about what you're singing or saying to an audience. And now I am addicted to classical music. I love the challenge. I love feeling that as an instrument, classical music uses every ounce that I have. It uses all of my registers. I feel completely kind of fulfilled when I get to sing music like that. When I started singing, I was a young girl with a big voice. So I was often given belter roles I was often trying to push to be louder and bigger and fuller and stronger than everyone else. And um, this, I think, fostered potentially some damage. Anyways, I took kind of a break from voice. I was a little burnt out and I was kind of finding myself. And when I came back to it with the professor here at ASU, Ann Copta, we noticed um, I had high notes, I had low notes, but right where they should meet in the middle, it did not connect. There was no unification. It would break, it would crack. Um, it would just, the chords wouldn't come together. They, the muscles just couldn't sustain it. And um, this really worried her. And she finally took me aside and she says, um, I think you have vocal damage. I think you should go. The Mayo Clinic has been doing lectures here at ASU. What they say is fascinating. I think they're the best people in the area for you to ask what's going on. Um, so I did. When I got there, it was my first time ever being scoped. So I was really excited because I got to see my vocal cords in action. I had seen other people's vocal cords in action on you know talks and speeches, but never my own. And that was amazing. Um, and relatively speaking, they were actually quite healthy, which was a huge relief. They did find slight vocal lesions, perhaps the remnants of some damage. And um, what really was the biggest problem was not the cords themselves, but was the muscles around it. They found that not even in my, speak my singing voice, but in my speaking voice, I had very bad habits. I pushed for volume rather than just use natural resonance. I had a lot of tension and it would translate into my singing. And that was really, that combination of bad muscle habits was what was actually causing the problem. So I have severe allergies and asthma, and perhaps much of the pushing came from trying to overcompensate for mucus and other things, which made my voice fall heavy and fall slow. So I would try and sing a song, and this register, <laughs> That would crack every time. <laughs> Can't even do it now. <laughs> but yes, that was the difference. <laughs> Ask any singer. Notes is like the ghost story, the scariest words you can possibly think of. Before I went into the Mayo Clinic, what nodes or nodules or lesions, I didn't even know the difference between them, um, what those things were was like the end. Um, the, what I learned afterwards was Without surgery, depending on your case, that doesn't have to be the end. You can heal from those things. And if anything, they are potentially amazing lessons about what you need to know about your own voice, how you need to protect your voice, and that even when you get to a place of good voice, it's still a battle. You should still be focusing and working on that because it can happen at any point in your life if you get careless with taking care of your own voice. A huge educational experience. It gave me a potential passion for speech language pathology that if you know running off to Broadway doesn't work out, I may go back to school for that. Um, it was interesting. I feel more empowered as a singer. Um, I'm more aware physiologically of what my instrument is doing. Um, 
And yes, my voice has come together amazingly. All of a sudden I have a unified voice. Well, not all of a sudden, there was work put into it. Um, and I got to go to Germany this past summer and sing with the Study Abroad um, Opera House program there and received hugely positive feedback. Um, now I'm being given songs that my voice teacher a year ago said I, I wasn't allowed to touch. And I'm auditioning for um, professional community theater shows. I'm auditioning for uh, operas in the area. I was in Phoenix Theater's Les Mis, which is an intense three-hour show, and managed to take care of my voice. So right now, not only do I feel like a career is very possible, um, I feel like I'm at a healthy place in relation to understanding my voice. When something is wrong, I know how to take care of it. I know how to be patient. I know how to give my voice the rest it needs. And I know how to appreciate it. I really appreciated yeah. that it wasn't an environment where they wanted me to stay with a doctor forever. They wanted me to become self-sufficient and be able to have my own career. Mm -hmm. 